Now we're going to start the module on the mean value theorem. And we're going to start with the theorem of Michel Roll, which is a particular case of the mean value theorem. So without further ado, we just state the result. Assume you have a function that satisfies three conditions. It is continuous on the closed interval AB. It is differentiable at each point in the interior of the interval. And it takes the same value at the endpoints of the interval. Under these three conditions, the theorem states that there exists at least one number C in the open interval AB where the derivative takes a value 0. So, the third condition that the values at the endpoints are the same corresponds to the two endpoints being at the same level. And the two conditions that the function is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval means that um, we connect these two points without lifting the pen and without having any corner point. So something like that. The conclusion is that there is a place where the derivative is zero. Geometrically, that means there is a place in the open interval AB where the tangent line is horizontal. As we can see, this is the case on this particular picture. Now we can try to draw other pictures where we have these three conditions, for instance, something like that, and we find a C uh, where we have an horizontal tangent, or something like that, where we find more than one possibility for the places where there is an horizontal tangent. Now you see that we have these three assumptions. The function is continuous, differentiable on the open, continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, and the same values at the endpoint. Each one of these three assumptions is essential to obtain the conclusion. So, for instance, continuity is essential because if, for instance, we consider this function, there is one discontinuity at A, and you see that <coughs> this function, even though it is differentiable on the open interval, it does take the same value at the endpoint A and B, but the slope of the tangent line is never zero. We can also have a function that is continuous on the closed interval, takes the same value at the endpoints, and doesn't satisfy the conclusion because there is one place where it's not differentiable. For instance, a function like that, there is one place in the interval where it's not differentiable, we have a corner point, and that's enough to make the conclusion fail. Finally, we can have a continuous function on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, where the <coughs> values at the endpoints are not the same and, as you can tell, the uh, tangent line is never horizontal. So if one of these three assumptions fails, then the conclusion possibly is false. So let's try to prove this result, even though it is quite clear from pictures that it ought to be true, we're in a position to justify it a little bit more formally. So, the first observation is that if the function is constant on the closed interval, this is possible because we have the same values at the endpoints, then the derivative is <coughs> identically zero on the closed interval AB, while well, on the open interval AB, and therefore any value that we pick in the open interval returns a derivative of zero. So in that case, there would be infinitely many possibilities for C. If f is not constant, then there is at least one value in the open interval AB where f takes a value that is different from f of a, and f of a is also f of b. So let's say for the sake of argument that there is an x where f of x is greater than f of a. Now because we have assumed the function to be continuous on the closed interval, using the extreme value theorem, we know that the function f has an absolute maximum on the closed interval AB. And moreover, this absolute maximum cannot occur at the endpoint A or B because 
we have at least one value f of x that is greater than f of a, so the maximum is greater than f of a, and f of a is f of b, so the maximum doesn't occur at the endpoints. But we have seen in the previous model that if we have a continuous function on a closed interval, it has a maximum and a minimum, and they occur either at the endpoint or at a critical value. So we can conclude that this maximum occurs at a critical value that is inside the interval and not at the endpoint. But f is differentiable at c, this is our second assumption. And therefore, if it's critical at a point where it's differentiable, that means the derivative at c is zero, which is exactly the conclusion we wanted to reach. So now let's go through some basic examples where we try to see what the theorem says. Let's start with the function x squared minus 4x plus 1 on the closed interval 0, 4. And we're going to try to check the assumptions of the theorem of Hall and try to see um, what are the values that satisfy the conclusion. So here the function is polynomial, in particular it is differentiable on the entire real line and at each point where the function is differentiable it is also continuous. Therefore the restriction of f to any closed interval is continuous on that closed interval and it's differentiable on the open interval. Moreover, if I plug x equals 0 in the function, I get 1. If I plug x equals 4 in that function, I get 16 minus 16 plus 1, so I get 1 as well. So all three assumptions of the theorem of Hall are satisfied. And therefore, we can conclude from the theorem that there is at least one value between 0 and 4 where the derivative is 0. In this case, this is a very simple function, so we can calculate the derivative explicitly and find explicitly what c is. The derivative here is 2x minus 4, so it is 0 exactly if x is 2, which is indeed a value in the open interval 0, 4. Let's try to do the same sort of things with a function sine of 2 pi x on the closed interval from negative 1 to 1. Sine x is differentiable on the real line, and so is the function that associates to x 2 pi x, so the composite, sine of 2 pi x, has this property as well. And therefore, just like before, by restriction to an interval, we obtain a function that is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. So that justified that this function satisfied the first two of the three assumptions in the theorem. The third condition is that the values of the function at the two endpoints is the same. In this case, if I plug negative 1 in this function, I get sine of negative 2 pi, which is 0, and it's the same of sine of 2 pi, which is f of 1. So we have the third condition, and therefore the theorem applies to the effect that we can guarantee that there exists some value between negative 1 and 1, where the derivative is 0. Again, this is a relatively simple function, so we can explicitly find the values of c that satisfy this conclusion. In our case, the derivative is 2 pi cosine of 2 pi x, because sine of 2 pi x is a composite, so to differentiate it, we use the chain rule. So we get the derivative of the outside function sine, in other words, we get cosine evaluated at the inside function, that's cosine of 2 pi x. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the function inside, in other words, we have to multiply by 2 pi. Now this is going to be 0 if cosine of 2 pi x is 0. So let's start with looking at when is a cosine equal to 0. If we look at that on the uh, trigonometric circle, see that the cosine is going to be 0 if we are at one of these two points. In other words, pi over 2 or negative pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. And you see that if you're at one of these two points, and you do a half turn around the circle, you get again on one of these two points. So in other words, if you start with pi over 2, and you add any number of turns, you end up again uh, at another point where the cosine is 0. If you subtract any number of turns going in the opposite direction, 
subtract any number of half turn, I'm sorry, you land again on one of these um, one of these points and the cosine is zero. In other words, that means that the cosine is zero if the angle is of the form pi over two plus k pi where k is an integer. So in this case we want the angle that is inside the cosine, which is two pi x, to be pi over two plus any number of half turn, that is a multiple of pi. Dividing both sides by 2 pi to solve for x, we obtain that x is 1 fourth plus k over 2, where k is an integer. The additional condition to satisfy the conclusion of the theorem is that this value of x should fall between negative 1 and 1. When k is 0, we get 1 fourth. When k is 1, get 1 fourth plus 1 half is 3 fourths. If k is 3, well then we get 1 plus 1 fourth, we go outside of the interval. On the other hand, if k is negative 1, we get 1 fourth minus 1 half, negative 1 fourth. If it's negative 2, we get negative 3 fourths. And if it's negative 3, we get something that is less than negative 1. In other words, the solutions are negative 3 fourths, negative 1 fourth, 1 fourth and 3 fourths. Finally, let's take a look at the tangent function on the interval 0 pi. The tangent function is differentiable on each one of its periods, and therefore, uh, if we're taking its restriction to a closed interval that is included in one of the periods, um, included in an interval uh, corresponding to a period, then it would be uh, differentiable on the open interval and continuous on the closed interval. The values at the endpoints here, at 0 it is 0, and at pi it is 0 as well, because of course sine of pi is 0. But if we take the derivative here, we, can, we have seen that we can write the derivative of the tangent function as 1 plus tangent square x. Tangent square x is something positive or 0, therefore we get 1 plus something positive, it's at least 1. More importantly, it doesn't take the value 0. So that means that the conclusion of the theorem fails. That means probably we didn't check the assumptions very carefully. So the question is, what is the problem? Well, I said that the restriction of the tangent to an interval that is included in the period would be differentiable on the open interval, continuous on the closed interval, but this interval 0 pi is not included in a period. More specifically, the function is not continuous at pi over 2, which is a point in the interior of this interval, and therefore the theorem does not apply. Now we're going to turn to the next video to look at a more general form of this theorem, the mean value theorem.